Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Let's do some cool lighted home decor with these burlap bags. A company called Burlap Fabric sent me a 12 pack of these burlap bags and I love them. I couldn't wait to get my hands on them and do some projects. So the first project that I'm going to do is I'm going to tea stain or coffee stain. It's a mixture of both the uh, top and actually I think I do the back too. The um, fabric on this uh, burlap. So I'm just taking my brush and dipping it into the tea stain we're going to call it and I'm staining the fabric so that it gives it an older rustic more primitive look. So once I get that all covered, I like the tea stain look, but I grab my grubby mix, which is um, pumpkin spice and cinnamon and coffee and all kinds of good spices. I'll put a link down in the description on how I make that, but you could use just cinnamon if you wanted to. And I just rub it in before the fabric dries so that it kind of stains it even more. It gives it these darker spots all over the fabric and it uh, it does dull down some once it dries so it's not going to be so it looks very splotchy here but it won't be once it dries now the reason why i didn't do the very top is because i roll it down and so i'm going to roll that down and do the tea stain on that as well i got these really cool rub-ons at dollar tree they were beautiful they had bees and flowers and even writing on some of them and I really loved this one that kind of, I guess they look kind of like daisies and I really liked it. So I wanted to put that on the front of my fabric and I'm just cutting out around it a little bit to make it easier to, uh, to use. And then the little heart on the side, I'm going to use it to put on a tag. So I cut that out so that I could use that later on. So I just laid it on there upside down and then just rubbed it with my Cricut tool because I, it doesn't come with a stick. And then it just transfers onto the fabric and it really looked kind of cool. I really like how this came out. So I just kind of rub it down and make sure that it's affixed all the way. And I cut, flipped it over and cut the back down near the bottom so that I could run my cord for my light down through. Now I get these lights uh, from the free shack at the dump. I get them at uh, Goodwill, uh, yard sales. Uh, I pick them up whenever I can find them because I use them a lot for projects. They're not just for Christmas anymore. They used to be, but they can be for so many more things. So I'm just feeding that cord through the back so that I can plug it in and stand it up straight and now I took a about a cup cup and a half of rice in two separate Ziploc bags and I'm using those to weight the bottom so you don't have to use rice you could use marbles or probably rocks or whatever you have that could weight those down I have plenty of rice so I just use those and so I just shake it around and kind of get them moving and that just holds the light in place and it gives it a base to the bottom of the bag so that you can uh, like I'm doing here you can stuff it and it just makes it look more full so now I'm going to uh, gather around the top the material and I keep it down below the bulb because the bulb does get a little bit warm uh, so you don't want to um, have the, any material touching that. So I make sure that here I'm showing you, I just kind of tie with the homespun tie and then fold it out so that it doesn't, um, doesn't touch that bulb. And then I'm just going to put a nice bow on the front of it. And again, fluffing and, and spreading that out so that it doesn't touch the bulb. And now I'm going to take some Spanish moss and go around the uh, outside of the bulb. I did wrap the top of the candle with uh, some, some more homespun twine. I don't think I showed that, so I just wanted to let you know. It's kind of yellowish, and I didn't want to paint it or anything. So I thought if I just uh, glued some on there that that would look pretty good. 
and it does. And I added a new bulb as well. I just used a, a silicone bulb that I have a by packs of two. So I just glued in that uh, Spanish moss. And now I have some flowers that I got from Michael's. These were $4.99 a bunch. These are yellow with some plasticky greenery. And these are the orange, orange yellow with a more fabric or paper material. So I'm going to use the mix of the both in this bag. So I'm just taking a little bit of hot glue and adding it to the bottom of my little flowers and greenery and sticking them in around the bulb and the top of the bag. These came out so stinking cute. I just absolutely love them. And it has a very fall look to them, but I think you could have them all year round, uh, especially if these are your colors in your home. Uh, I just really just love them. Now I'm taking a wooden tag that I have. I bought a whole pack of them from Amazon. And I will put links down in the description for the things that I am using that I can find. And I'm just going to take that heart. It says bloom on it. And then something else underneath, but I can't bloom where you are, maybe. Uh, and so I tea dyed it, and then I put some black around it to give it some uh, rustic look. And then I'm tying it on, and it's done. So this next one is uh, some more Dollar Tree transfers. These are gold colored, and I just love all four of these different designs. I'm taking another burlap bag from burlapfabric.com and I am going to dress this one up too. So first thing I'm going to do is put a piece of paper inside so that when I paint the front, yep, I'm going to paint it with black paint. I don't want it to go through to the other side. So I just stuck that in there and now I am painting away. So I just dipped my brush into some black paint and I'm just brushing around. Now I'm going to have some spots that are darker and some that are lighter. And that is because when I put the gold down, I want it to really pop. And I'm not going to do a thick, thick coat all over. I'd like to have it uh, see some of that burlap fabric through the, um, the top. So as you can see here, it's just got like stripes of black through it. And then when I put on my transfers that are gold, they really pop over those darker black spots. So I think that came out really cool. So I'm just laying it down and rubbing it on. And then uh, I take the paper that I used there and just rubbing it. It's burnishing, I think it's called. And it's just making sure that it's all the pieces are down. They don't uh, come up. So this is the butterfly one. I'm going to be using a few of the butterflies on that. The other one that I used with the flowers is uh, dandelion or dandelion seeds, I guess, uh, when it goes to seed. And so that's what the, the uh, little flowers are. So I thought that would look very cute together. So I'm taking another one of these electric plug-in lights and I'm going to cut a hole in the back. I'm just going to show you how I do that. Now, uh, this is the reason why I don't put my uh, rice down in there without a bag because it would just fall out the hole. So uh, unless you, I suppose you could glue it around the bottom so that it wouldn't do that, but I'm just putting them in little Ziplocs. I think it works just fine. So I just do a little slit in the bottom big enough so that it will uh, let the plug go through in the little on off switch. And I suck that little uh, light right down in that bag there. And then I add my, uh, my little rice bags around the outside. And then I just work with them and move them around just so they look really nice and even on both sides. Now I was going to fold this one down uh, like I did the other one, but I decided I was going to fold it in because I didn't want the white rim on it. So I'm going to fold that inside just so, and then I'm going to stuff it again with my, my uh, little stuffing. And that just makes the bag look a little fuller. And I just love, and it makes you, so you can see the, the design on the front. So once I get done stuffing that, I am going to 
cut a piece of the jute rope uh, and I'm going to tie that around the front. So again, as I'm tying, I'm not tying too tight and I'm working that top so that it kind of ruffles and sticks up, but not too far. And uh, then I tie a little bow. Now, while it's sitting there, I'm going to glue on some more jute rope uh, onto the candle. So that covers that up and it'll all play together nicely once it gets done and it just covers up the kind of the yellow, uh, some, some of them are a little bit broken around the top. So that just kind of covers it up and you don't see what that looks like. So just adding a little bit of glue and finishing on that, uh, finishing off that top piece. And then I'll cut that off flush so that it looks like, uh, it belongs there. Now I'm going to glue around the, around the edges and put in my Spanish moss. I think this adds so much to these bags, just kind of spilling out and spilling over uh, out of the top. It just looks so cool. These are the little uh, bulbs that I use, the silicone bulbs. I get these off of Amazon, a two pack. I usually buy uh, quite a few of them at a time because I use them a lot and I like to have them on hand when I'm ready to do a craft with them. So uh, I started to put the flowers in there and I used some of those plastic little grass looking things and I just chucked it. Um, I didn't like the look of those in this bag. Uh, I didn't like the plasticky look. So I just ripped those back out and I'm adding the greenery from this one here, but I'm not going to add any of the orange to this one. I like the yellow that it just pops against that black that I painted on. So I just cut these down. They don't need to be that tall. I mean, you could do them tall if you wanted to. Um, trying to put them in and make them kind of go out of the bag and not towards the bulb. Because again, the bulb gets warm. It doesn't get super warm like it would start a fire, but you don't want anything touching it. So I just kind of work my way around it and uh, put in the flowers and the grasses that I think look really nice. Now I am going to do a tag for this one so I'm taking my dark stain and I'm staining up another wood tag and just wiping that back. And I'm going to do both sides of that. And then I'm going to take some more of the dandelions. Oh, I did some black around the edges, of course, to distress it. But I'm going to take some more of the dandelion rub-ons. And I'm just going to take some of the little pieces that I had from cutting it apart. And put those on there, just kind of random. And just making it look kind of cool. And again, I'm just using my Cricut uh, bottom to my, I don't even know what this thing is, but uh, it, it was flat. So I just need something to, to rub that so that it will stick to the, to the little tag. I did let the tag dry before I added this. So make sure that your project is dry. That looks so cool. I love the shininess. Now this next bag that I do is, uh, going to be fun but it's also going to be a little bit challenging and I love the colors and it's going to be so colorful. So I have this decoupage paper from Zazzle and I cut it down so that I could uh, adhere it to the bag. Now that was a great idea until I started doing it and I'll show you a little bit later on or I'll explain it what what kind of happened uh, as I did that, but it it was it all turned out great in the end. Just so no worries. So all I did was just cut it down so it was the size of the bag, and now I'm taking a little bit of water and going around the edges so that I can give it kind of an organic look. It needs to be a little bit smaller than the sides and the top and bottom of the bag. So I left it the exact same size and then just used the water 
so that I could rip it and give it an organic kind of, um, uh, just a, just a ripped look. There we go. I think that comes out so cool. And I did both the sides and then I, I ripped down the top a little bit as well so that it would be a little bit shorter than the bag. So when I go to roll it down, it doesn't, um, it doesn't roll down with the roll. So I did all that, and then I took my my little trusty piece of uh, newspaper there and folded it and put it into the bag so that it wouldn't stick when I put the Mod Podge on. So now I'm going to just slowly, in sections, add this really beautiful picture. And I love this as Choice of Flower Seeds. Uh, I think that looked so cool with the bag so that it, it just kind of makes you think, oh, there's flower seeds in there and they're kind of sprouted and coming out the top. So, and I just work my way up, just do little sections at a time with the Mod Podge and then put the paper down and make sure that it's stuck. And that worked out really well. I, I really was surprised at how easy that was. Um, and it came out so good. There were a few wrinkles, but it wasn't too, too bad, really. And uh, the wrinkles are fine with me. It just gives it a more rustic, uh, older look. So I just did that all the way up. And then I took my Mod Podge and went around the edges and then over the whole thing once I got the edges done so that it would stay down once it was dry. Now here's the part where I had an issue. I went to take the paper out of the bag so that I could, because I didn't want it to get glued into the bag. And when I did, it was already starting to dry and it glued to the top of the bag. So when I pulled it out, it kind of tried to pull the bag with it and it, there was wrinkles and it was trying to like ball up on me. And luckily I had my brush with my Mod Podge there and I just gently worked on it and spread that back out. I had a few spots where it tried to, or it kind of ripped on me a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. I took my uh, heat gun and heat gunned it so that it was really, it was dry, not completely of course, but it was pretty dry. And then I stuck, as you saw, I just showed you that roll of tape in there so that the two the insides wouldn't get stuck together while I work on my next project, which is this uh, little piece. It says 1908. I want to put this on a tag to hang on the bag after I am finished. So I wanted to cut that out. But see, it wasn't really a super, you know, bad thing, but it wasn't great at the time. And I didn't get any video of it because I thought I'd just be able to pull the paper out and it wouldn't be a big deal. Well, it did wrinkle quite a bit more, but again, I don't mind the wrinkles and I worked quite a bit of them out with the Mod Podge on the brush. So I added the 1908 on the front of the tag and then I didn't want the back of the tag to be plain, so I just cut out another piece of paper out of a scrap piece that has um, a flower on it so that if it gets flipped around, it looks like it still goes with the bag. And I'm just cutting the excess paper off. And then as it dries, I will get my sanding paper and sand off the edges so that it is um, nice and, and conformed to the tag. And I think that looks so cool. And then uh, I added a string to that. So I, this one is not a, an electric light. This one is a battery operated light. Now if you're going to do this, make sure that I'm just showing you here that you want the to be able to turn it on and off by the top because you won't be able to access the bottom once you get it all tied and kind of tucked in there. So you also want to be able to change the batteries through the top so that if you need new batteries, uh, you know, it's all accessible. So I decided I that was dry enough so I could start working with it. And it feels kind of plasticky on the front. It, it's really kind of cool. And I'm just kind of rubbing down some of the, the, um, the paper to, you know, the, the wrinkles to see if, if I could get some more out. They really weren't too, too bad, but um, 
I just couldn't believe that that happened when I pulled the paper out of the bag. But I fixed it, and it came out so cute. So I'm just rolling the top down so I could get my uh, little light in there. And again, my little rice bags, I'm going to put two to make the bottom look nice and full. It's about a cup, cup and a half of rice. Um, I buy it in bulk, so I have all kinds. So I just found some of my older boxes and um, just use those. So there, just tuck that in and it's just working it around to make the base uh, flat enough and stuff. And I wanted to make sure that you could read the words on the bottom. So now I'm just tucking the stuffing inside there to make it look nice and full. And then I'm just gonna take some uh, twine and wrap, wrap that around the top. Again, just making it uh, nice and tight around that. And I did not do anything to the candle on this one. Uh, it's a brand new battery operated candle, so it's, it's nice and like an ivory color. So I thought it went with the bag pretty well. So I just left that one the way it was. Of course, you could do anything you wanted. I thought of doing some grubby mix on, it, on them too, but, um, you know, by the time you get done putting your uh, Spanish moss, your flowers, and everything in there, you wouldn't really see it very much. So I didn't do it with this one, but some future ones I may. like the other bags that I did I'm taking some of the yellow and orange flowers and some of the greenery and going to add those to the bag the top of the bag coming out around the candle I think these look so cute and I love the colors in this bag very fall but again you could leave them out all year long if you wanted to I just really love how this came out So we're gonna see the end result after a little product that I wanna show you and stick around to the end because I have some news for you to hear and you're going to want to after watching these cute little bags being made. I got a deck box with seating for my deck, but I gotta put it together. So let's do this. Here we go, it's done. This deck box was sent to me from Patio Well. They have several different kinds. This is the 82 gallon deck box. I received the black color. They also have gray, light brown, and brown. Very beautiful colors. And they also have different sizes from bigger to smaller than this box. It's super easy to put together. They just snap in and you only need a screwdriver or a screw gun just for the hinges. So they snap right together just like this. Super, super easy. I had no problem putting this together. Just give it a little tap and they go snap right in. I didn't wanna show you this whole thing but it really didn't take very long and I wanted you to see how easy it was to put this together. Very easily, easy assembly and structurally, very solid once you get it together as well. The lid went right in. Once you got it in the groove, all you had to do was just take your hand and bop it. There you go, it's in. Now these hinges were a little bit more, I'm um, not gonna say, not gonna say hard, but they, you had to kind of hold the box open while you put the first hinge in. Once you got the hinge connected, the other side stayed up a lot, a lot easier. So you didn't have to worry about that. These hinges are great because they will hold the box top up and it slows it down when it goes up and just stops. And then it drops down very gently so it won't like hit somebody on the head or anything like that. It works very, very well. This is the 82 gallon, like I said, and it is huge. This fits this chair. It's one of those big, uh, the extra big chairs for you know taking it camping or or sitting around the fire or whatever and you could easily fit probably seven or eight of these in here uh, all folded up like that it's really crazy this one you can sit on the top and it's very sturdy it locks it has a lock on the front 
uh, area, and it also has these handles on the side to make it easy to pick up. So once I got everything inside the box that I wanted, I decided I'm going to decorate it up. So I just added uh, a mat, a table runner, and some of my wildflowers, and then a few candles so that I could enjoy my little box. So this could be, again, used for seating, or it could be used uh, like I have it here and just set your drink on it and just for storage. It's definitely waterproof. It's been through two rainstorms and nothing has gotten wet inside. The size and it is great and it's very durable. I really love how easily it was put together and how sturdy it is. So if you're interested in one of these deck boxes or even a metal building, they sell those too. Check out the link down below in the description. Now let's check out how the projects came out. I'd like to thank burlapfabric.com and patiowell.com for sending me such wonderful products. I love these burlap bags. They are so fun to craft with. And I just wanted you to know that if you check out my Etsy store, the link will be down in the description. These bags will be for sale. So run, don't walk to my Etsy store and grab these up. I hope you like my projects. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.